looking out for the island. All was quiet except for the man at the helm, who was whistling while he watched the sails rippling in the wind and the swish of the sea against the sides of the ship. There was scarcely an apple left, so I climbed into the barrel to reach the last ones. Sitting down at the bottom, eating in the dark with the ship rocking gently, I was on the verge of falling asleep. Suddenly, a heavy man sat down close by, and the barrel shook as he leaned his shoulders against it. I was about to jump up when I heard Long John's voice, but after listening a while, I wouldn't have shown myself for the entire world. I stayed there, trembling and listening, fearful and curious. Within moments, I realized the lives of all the honest men aboard depended upon me alone. No, Long John said. Flint was captain and I was quartermaster. Took care of all the ship's food and equipment I did. I lost my leg in the same attack that cost old Pew his eyesight. And the surgeon who amputated my leg was hung with the rest for piracy. Flint's old ship was the Walrus, and the last time I saw it, the ship was covered with blood and looked like it would sink with all the gold. Ah! A young man's voice cried, full of admiration. Flint was a legend. I first sailed with Captain England. Long John said. Then I sailed with Flint. I put nine hundred dollars away safe after sailing with England, and two thousand dollars after Flint. Not bad for a seaman. All the money is safe in the bank. Doesn't matter what you earn. It's what you save that counts. Old Pew spent all of his money. Now he's dead, trampled like a dog in the road. Where are Flint's men now? Well, most of them are aboard this ship. But Flint's men didn't save like you did, the young seaman said. You're young, Dick, Long John said. But you're smart. I saw that right away. So I'll talk to you like a man. Imagine how I felt hearing this old scoundrel repeating almost the very same words of flattery that he had used on me. Now it's them. عشان نحن جونا كان أول فيديو عشان إيه؟ موكا بعد ما خلص الفيديو هذا تتعلم جميل لنا؟ أو طبعا وإحنا بنقرأ الكويس هترجم لك كل حاجة فيه أه. تمام He continued to speak never thinking he was being overheard Pirates live rough Eating and drinking like there's no tomorrow. When a voyage is done, they spend their money on rum in a good time. Then they go back to sea again as poor as ever. Me? I save my money. I'm fifty, mind you, and once back from this voyage, I'll be a real gentleman. But I've lived easy, sleeping on a soft bed and eating good food every day I wasn't at sea. And how did I begin? Why, I was just a sailor like you. 
عشان طاقتك توصل للماكس مورو عملت لك مورو ماكس حجم اكبر شوكولاته اكتر كراميل ونوجا اكتر مورو ماكس طاقه مورو بس ماكس مورو الحياه محتاجه طاقه But all your money is gone now, isn't it? Dick said. No, my wife has it, answered Long John. And by now my tavern is sold too. When I come home from sea, she'll meet me and bring all the money down. How long will we be on this ship? Captain Smollett scolded me long enough by thunder. Speak soft, Long John said. Keep quiet until I give the word. Aye, Israel growled. But when will that be? At the last possible minute, that's when, said Long John. Captain Smollett has to sail the ship for us, because I don't have the map, understand? They need to find Flint's treasure for us and get it aboard. If I was sure our men could handle the ship, I'd have the captain bring us halfway back home before we attacked. We're all seamen. We can handle the ship ourselves. Dick said. Sure, Long John snapped. But who here knows how to set a course? Can you do all the complicated calculations necessary to figure out the best route to take? But I know how impatient y'all are, so as soon as the treasure is on board, I'll deal with the others. You are bloodthirsty swabs, you are. Don't get angry, Israel said. How many hasty lads have I seen hanging at execution dock back in England? Long John snarled. If you'd only plan your course well, you'd ride in carriages. Instead, you only care about rum, so you hang. You're a careful man, said Israel, but most of us like a bit of fun. Pew and Flint were that sort, Long John replied. Pew died a beggar, and Flint died of rum. What do we do with the others once we take over? Dick asked. Captain England would abandon them, Silver said. Flint and Billy Bones would just cut their throats. Dead men don't bite, sneered Israel. <laughs> right you are, said Long John. We'll wait. And when the time comes, we'll kill them! Then, Long John broke off planning the ship's takeover and said gently, Be a sweet lad, Dick, and get me an apple. My throat's dry. Terror struck me as I heard Dick get up, and my heart and limbs froze. Then, Israel exclaimed, Oh, forget that. Let's have some rum. Dick, Long John said, here's the key to the keg. Go fill me a pint. Terrified as I was, I finally knew how Mr. Arrow got the drink that destroyed him. Then, Israel spoke into Long John's ear. I didn't catch it all, but this phrase was audible. Not another man will join. So I knew there were still faithful men on board. When Dick returned, the trio drank. Here's to luck, said Dick. Here's to old Flint, said Israel. And here's to ourselves. 
said Long John Silver. Almost at the same time, the lookout sh shouted, Land ho! I jumped out of the barrel and dived behind the foresail when I heard feet pound across the deck. Then, I joined Hunter and Dr. Livesey in the rush to see the land that had been sighted. The fog began to lift about the same time the moon appeared, and we saw two hills a couple of miles apart on the island. Rising behind them was a third, higher hill, whose peak was still buried in fog. Men, Captain Smollett said, has anyone ever seen that island before? I have, sir, Long John said. I was there once with a merchant ship. Can we safely drop anchor on the south side? The captain asked. Aye, sir, replied Long John. That small bit of land is called Skeleton Island. It was a place for pirates once. The three hills on the main island are Foremast Hill, Main Hill, and Mizzen Hill. The pirates kept a lookout on Main Hill when they were anchored, so they called it Spyglass Hill. I have a chart here, Captain Smollett said. See if that's the place. Long John's eyes gleamed eagerly as he took the chart, but it wasn't the map we found in Billy Bone's chest. It was a copy that was complete, except for the red crosses and the written notes, the information that would lead anyone to the treasure. Long John hid his disappointment and annoyance. Yes, sir, he said. That's the spot. Captain Kidd's anchorage. That's what my shipmates called it. There's a strong current that runs along the south and then heads north along the west coast. You were very wise to slow down here. If you intend to stay for a time, there's no better place for the ship. Thank you, Captain Smollett said. I'll ask for your help later. You may go. I was surprised by how cool Long John was, admitting he knew the island. Then, he came near me and laid his hand on my arm, and I could scarcely conceal a shudder. Ah, he said, this island is a sweet spot for a lad. You'll swim, climb trees, and run up the hills like a goat. Tell me when you want to go exploring, and I'll make up a snack for you. Then, he clapped me on the shoulder and hobbled off. Captain Smollett, the squire, and Dr. Livesey were talking together on the quarter deck. I was anxious, but I dared not interrupt them while the crew was listening. I was trying to think of some way to get their attention when Dr. Livesey called to me. Jim, fetch my pipe for me, he said. I ran and got his pipe, and when I gave it to him, I whispered, Doctor, please do as I say. Get the captain and squire down to the cabin and then send for me. I have terrible news. The doctor's face turned serious, but he recovered quickly. Thank you, Jim, he said quite loudly. Then, acting as if he'd asked me a question, he added, That was all I wanted to know. The doctor then retated. Now, Hawkins, Trelawney said, speak up. I told them what I'd heard, and nobody interrupted. 
Captain, Trelawney said, finally. You were right, and I was wrong. I'll admit it. I must have missed some clues, too, the Captain returned. For I never heard of a crew planning to mutiny without any warning signs. It's Silver's influence, said the Doctor. He's a remarkable man. He'd look remarkably good hanging from the rigging, the captain said. Well, we can't turn back. If I ordered them to turn around, they'd attack us at once. We have some time, at least until this treasure's found. But we'll have to fight them sooner or later. I propose we hit them when they least expect it. Can we count on your servants, Mr. Trelawney? Definitely, the squire declared. That's three men, the captain said. Add the rest of us and that makes seven, including Hawkins here. Can we count on any more men? The men Trelawney hired before he met Silver should be honest, replied the doctor. We can't rely on them, the squire said. Israel was one of those men. Well, gentlemen, said the captain, keep your eyes and ears open. We can do nothing until we know who's with us. Jim can help, the doctor said. The men like him, and Jim notices everything. Hawkins, I'm putting my faith in you, said the squire. I felt desperate and helpless because we were so outnumbered. Right now, the grown men on our side were six, and the pirates nineteen. The pirates are nineteen. Okay, go back to the chapter. And now the kid had not to rob us, huh? Well, I can't tell us. يعني احنا هنكمل الخامس بكره ولا هنا قصدي الرابع الابيسود غير التشابتر الابيسود بتبقى تشابتر يعني وان ابيسود اند هاف بيكونوا تشابتر يعني حلقه ونص دول وان تشابتر بس يعني احنا عندنا ست ست فصول لكن في الـ في الابيسودز هم ايد ثمان حلقات يعني كان خدنا الثالث بس صح؟ ايوه ان شاء الله بس ممكن بقى تترجمي حاضر يا يا اسلام احنا مش عندنا ثمان فصول؟ احنا ايه؟ عندنا ثمان فصول قصه طيب هو الصوت بيقطع فلحظه بس يقول لك هو هم ست فصول عندنا ولكن في الفيديو ايوه عندنا ست <تصفيق> الاول ست فصول. انا استسمعت 8 فصول ومع 8 بس. لا هم ستة. احنا لسه خدنا الشابتر 3 ونص شابتر 4 بقى لنا السكشن الاول. احنا هناخد 3 هنكمل 3 هنبداوا من الاول وكده نحكي في الشابتر بالكامل. يعني احنا لسه هنشوف نهايه القصه لسه في الترم الثاني. ليه نشوفها في الترم الثاني؟ ليه؟ مش القصة يعني القصة 12 في شابتر ولا 6 شابتر؟ والله أنا ما بصيتش في كتاب الترم الثاني هي القصة مكملة ولا تشا ولا ولا نيو واحدة بس أعتقد إن هي تريجر أيلاند برضه أيوة لا مكملة أنا شفت لقيتها مكملة مكملة تريجر أيلاند أيوة لا أنا مش هستنى كل ده أبقى أشوفها في الأجازة يا عم هخش على اليوتيوب يا عم أشوفها دلوقتي أنا بصيت على كل الفيديو أصلا <تصفيق> ماشي يا محمد ماشي لو ايه انا مش هستنى انا دخلت بسيط على كل السوبر تيم الاول ماشي 
بص ده بس بس المشكله كده هتضيع متعه الحصه بتاعت القصه مش عارف اللي بيحصل ايوه اللي هو احنا بس بنحضر كده ايوه عشان كده ما كنتش عايزه اتابعها من الاول خلينا حصه في حصه افضل انا كمان زيكم مش بحاول ان انا ابص كتير يعني خلينا نعمل ديسكفر مع بعض لان السنه اللي عدت انا ما كنتش بدرس اولى ثانوي وهي القصه كانت جاست فور ريدنج فما كناش بناخدها فعادي بالنسبه لي يعني تقريبا ثانيه ثانوي عندهم جليفرز ترافلز او اعتقد هي لا كينج لير عندهم كينج لير Mr. Terloni sent, sent Jim to uh, Jim with a note to Silver in where Zim show, show, so sorry, uh, Black Dog. يعني في الشابتر ده إسلام بيبدأوا هم الرحلة بتاعت البحث عن الـ, الـ treasure. تمام. وبياخدوا Jim معاهم الـ young boy 